Hi there, fire catchers. This is Andrea York with Catch the Fire Worship Flags, and we are back for fire catchers chat. Uh, we have a returning friend, uh, another fire catcher who we who was the very first kind of chat that we did on YouTube. Uh, her name is Rachel Crawford, and uh, uh, welcome, welcome, Rachel. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I was going to say something else, but I'm like, no, we're going to have that conversation. So, so um, <laughs> we'll just chat. So thanks for being back. It's been now, December was when you, when we chatted the first time. Yeah. It was before I started raising funds. Yeah. So yeah, we, uh, I talked with you in December, uh, for the kind of the purpose you were raising funds. Uh, and now that trip has come and gone. And mm -hmm. so we, we, I would, the fire catchers are going to want to know what the impact of the trip was. So let's, so you'll have to remind people again, where you were going and what was the purpose. <clears throat> okay. Um, well it, in May, I went to Recife, Brazil. Um, with my fellow second year students for Day Spring School of Supernatural Ministry. Uh, we were working with a ministry called Shores of Grace. And so we were told that we would be there kind of working with their local community programs. They, every day of the week, we did a different thing. So, like, we were just there, kind of just going with what the Holy Spirit told us. And there were some pretty amazing things that showed up <laughs> can you give a, so i know can you give us a couple of highlights about about like so a for an example um i think the the biggest impact like for me personally were two things we did uh one night we went to um like this made like park area and they called it um street church so they would go and they just, all they're doing is just fellowshipping and loving on the people. They're not like, like hardcore, like necessarily like ministering to them. It's just more like just loving on them and then finding out like what their needs are and just like building that relationship. And so they just told us like, there's going to be a ton of kids. So just go with what the Holy Spirit tells you to do. So some people were off like, with a translator praying for people. Some people were just simply just walking around and praying in silence and intercessing. Me, I was on a blanket that was by on the ground and there was girls that wanted their fingernails painted. Some of them wanted to paint my nails. And then next thing you know, like they said, do we have someone that can draw? And then I'm like, well, I'm an artist. And so they said, the kids love it when people draw them pictures that they can color. And I'm like, oh, that's easy. I draw cartoon characters all the time. And so I was drawing all kinds. I mean, animals galore. And I just sat there for like two hours just drawing animals. And these kids were just like swarming around. And they were just like ooing and aahing at these pictures. And they weren't like, to me, they were just simple little pictures that I've been drawing for years, you know, that I just memorized all what they're supposed to look like. I could duplicate them perfectly every time. And I do it for my preschool kids too, all the time. So this was, I was like in my element, I was happy as a clam just sitting there with these kids living on me and me loving on them. And it was just awesome to be doing what I do in a normal day-to-day -day life, but yet doing, this is totally different. Like this is for God. And I was surprised how naturally I fell into that. It was confirmation that I have tons of people that tell me I'm anointed in that area with kids. And I never really thought much about it because I work with them. This is what I do for a living, but it's not like, you know, I have gotten a big education on how to, you know, work with kids. You know, I just work in a daycare, <laughs> but it was just confirmation for me. Like I was just like, these kids just were magnified towards me. And that was pretty awesome. Um, the second time was on the last night and they told us that to go, we needed to be very prepared and because we would be going on the streets and ministering to the local prostitutes. And it's something that they've been doing for a long time. Um, it's prostitution is legal down there. And so they told us, they're like, be prepared. You're, 
going to hear all kinds of stories. You're going to meet all kinds of people. Go with an open mind. Make sure you walk in the spirit because there might be some things that might shock you. And I knew the minute that they said that, that this was going to be the night that I had been praying into before I even left. But when I, before I left, the one thing I asked for God, I was like, I have never had you reveal to be the one. I've had all, everybody else on the team has millions of times have had a revelation of somebody that they're supposed to talk to, that they get a vision, you know, some kind of clue. And I had never really had that. So that day I was, it was the last night of the trip and I was very, by definition, I'm an introvert. So I was very socially overly stimulated. So like the enemy was really like getting in my head and telling me like, he's like, why are you even here? Like you're, you're useless, you know, and it was really starting to weigh on me. And so I spent that day kind of away from everybody resting and just like listening to praise music and just being alone with God. And I, in my dream, he revealed to me, he, um, I saw the color yellow. I saw that it was a female transsexual. That was all I knew. And so I'm like, okay, I'll just go with it. And so I went that night fully prepared and had my armor on. And like, we got about halfway through the night because we were there about two, three hours, something like that. And we didn't get back to well after midnight. And um, I was starting to feel a bit like disheartened because the one hadn't showed up. And so I'm, was talking to the girl that was our translator. She's also an American that's actually from our town, Springfield, Missouri. So I was sharing with her about how it broke my heart because we had several of these men and women that would say, I don't believe that God loves me because I've messed up so much. And it just literally my heart just broke to pieces because I, I know what that feels like my testimony of being an addict and alcoholic and, and, and coming out of sexual immorality. Like I get it. I know what that, it's, what that is. That's literally how my entire journey started. And so I was telling her a little bit about it and she said, see, this is the stuff we want you to share. And I said, well, it's not that I don't want to, I just don't know how to get in there and do it because of the language barrier. And, you know, and I, and I have a fear of saying something in the wrong way. And she's like, don't worry about that because we as translators know how to translate it to where if you say something that could be offensive, we can turn it to where it's not. So they're like, just say what the Holy Spirit is telling you. So we were ministering to one young lady and then I saw her walk by and I knew it was her because God, like I could not get my eyes off of her. I knew I could hear the spirit inside of me tell me that's the one. And like, at first I questioned it, I'm like, but there's no color yellow. I assumed it was like a piece of clothing, something yellow. It was her hair. Her hair was very like bright blonde, like very bleach blonde. So it was like a yellow color and everything else fit into place, you know, and like, I just couldn't help myself. So that was, she was the one that we talked to the, the next and the one thing that she said was she said she wanted out of the lifestyle, but she said there are some people that are in it that are very intimidated. It's hard to get out once you're in. And then she said, I want to be strong and walk away, but I feel so weak. And the next thing I know, I just started speaking out and I said, I know what that weakness feels like. I know what it feels like to have that fear that you're not going to be strong enough to get through what you're and, and, and do what you want to do and to be, and feel like you have to be forced in a situation that you really don't want. And so I started sharing with her about how I got forced into a lifestyle I never intended for myself and how it, it drug me further and further in the darkness to the point that I really did think that I was hopeless. And I really did believe that God, there was no way that God would ever take me back. I said, but it took for me to, all it took was for me to meet one person, one person that God sent in my life 
that told me how much he loves me and how much I'm worth to him. And that's all it took was that one person. And I said, I believe I'm that person for you and I can feel your strength. And I hear God say that you have nothing to be ashamed of. There is no sin that you can do that will make you love him, love you any less. And then, I mean, you could tell like she wanted to cry so bad. She even said that she's like, I want to cry, but I can't because I I don't want to ruin my makeup. And uh, it was kind of really cute and sweet, but there was an impact. There was something that broke that night. And I mean, it was something broke off of her uh, very obvious. She was said that she could feel that this was confirmation of what she wanted to do. She had it all planned out what she wanted to do with her life. And I said, just do it. God will show you the way. And she just welcomed the prayers with open arms. And like, she was just, it was powerful. And then for me, it was powerful for me because I was like, wow, like this actually happened. Like you showed me who, who this person was and here she is like, whoa. <laughs> so I, I felt honored that God just sent me all the way across the world to speak my testimony to somebody that needed to hear it. It's pretty awesome. That is so, when you were actually sharing, especially like this, the second story, my, I, I have Holy Spirit. Bumps. <laughs> like, I mean, even like these many, you know, couple months later that you're sharing that it's, it's still so powerful. The te- I mean, testimonies, uh, these are eternal. This, yeah. this is what, um, uh, it, is the fruit of our lives. Right. So, mm-hmm. and I also wanted to say, like, I love what you said that you were in the, in your element. Like I, I realize that when I travel even outside of my region or my territory, I'm way more, um, aware of what I carry of the anointing that I carry in a different territory because when you're mm-hmm. in your own territory it, you're just going about your day like you kind of yeah forget I don't want to I mean I do I mean I forget that I am you know that Christ is in me and and that makes me powerful and dangerous and scary to the enemy like in my own territory i'm just like consumed mm-hmm. by that driver that cut me off or rushing to get home or like you know all of the things of daily life but when you travel and get outside your territory which is one of the reasons that i love um when when I hear ministry, you know, people are doing ministry outside of their territory of they're going on a mission trip or something that they're going to experience, um, mm-hmm. just outside, uh, of their anointing. Now that's not the only thing that you're anointed. Now you had a part of what catch the fire worship flags did. We, we supported you a little bit. I know that you had to raise a yeah. lot and you uh, did yeah. a phenomenal job. <laughs> <laughs> And can you actually, um, can you talk to talk about that? Because there's lots of us that are going on trips and money never seems to be enough. Mm-hmm. You, it was a big, it was a big amount. Can you yeah. tell like some of the, the stories around, around your fundraising? Oh yeah, absolutely. Those are just testimonies in itself. Um, I honestly did not, I had to raise uh, $2,500. And originally it was supposed to be way more than that. And God provided in ways like it was just absolutely ridiculous. Like one of the things, there were some stuff uh, funding that got cut because it was just going to be way too much and they didn't feel called by the spirit to do it. And so that, that helped like tremendously. And then they found like a crazy amount of deals airfare wise that cut it in half. And then like God like showed up because it looked like it, it looked like we were going to like not be able to go because um, all of a sudden we found out that the flight from Sao Paulo to Recife, our airline no longer flew to Recife. And we had to like uh, thank God for Becky, who was our coordinator, because she worked with the airlines to get it figured out. I mean, it wasn't easy, but we got it done. And so it actually ended up cutting our, we didn't even have to pay baggage fee (laughs) because they got cut that deal. We're like, woo! 
And then um, I started raising money about January and believe me it was the most terrifying thing I'd ever had to do because that's a large amount of money for somebody that was not only paying tuition but also I, I'm a preschool teacher I don't make much you know and so I was like okay so I prayed about it I was like what do you want me to do to raise the money because this is beyond me and the first thing the first blessing was when fire catchers came and said to said that they would help by with revenue sales and donate it to towards the funds, which helped tremendously. And, um, cause I think that was like, that alone was like what $300 or something like that. it was a pretty big chunk of money. So that, that helped. And then, um, I was quite a bit, at least a thousand of that came from the $5 jewelry that I sell. And so people were doing that and we did two fundraisers at DSSM that um, where we were allowed to bring whatever product that we were selling to raise funds for. And most people were buying just one piece of jewelry, but they were showing up with double or triple the amount that the jewelry was even worth. So you're talking a $5 piece of jewelry and they're handing me 20, 30 bucks. And so that was like, whoa, like I, I met my first in, or my second installment that way. My first installment, I was a hundred and trying to think $175 short and I was starting to panic I was like okay how, how do I get this what am I going to do and I'm like was scrambling and money was coming I believed it and I kept praying into it and proclaiming it and then I went and I was talking to my boss um at my morning job and she said well I found she like you had that um tuition gar garnishment a few months ago but they remember they, they, they pardoned you from it, but they never did tell me what I was supposed to do with the rest of the money. She had held on to that money for a year waiting to find out what the heck she's supposed to do with this money. But nobody was getting back to her. And she said, you know what? I'm just going to give you back that money. And I said, okay, great. And so when, um, when she gave me that, it wasn't quite enough to meet the whole amount that I needed. And so I was like, I said, okay. And I was not really talking to her. I was just talking out loud. And I said, okay, I got to figure out how I'm going to get this little bit. And I don't remember exactly how much it was, but it was still a pretty good chunk of money that needed to come out in the first 500. And so I was, and she, she goes, how much do you need? And I told her, and the next thing I know, she pulls out her checkbook and she wrote the check for that amount of money. And I just started crying. And she said, I told you I was going to donate. And I said, I know, but this is like a very generous amount of money. And she says, you're worth it. And you're going, you're supposed to be there. So that was the first miracle. The second miracle happened um, during, for the third installment. Now, when I was doing the second installment, I was giving my tuition money over to Brazil because God kept saying, give it to Brazil. And I was like, but I need to have all my tuition paid off or I won't graduate. And this entire trip will have been for nothing because it's part of graduation. And so I was like, but I'm trusting you. I'm being obedient. And so I did. And so on the day that the third, the, the last tuition payment was due, I had $300 left. And I said, I don't know. I, I talked to the director who's so somebody that I have been to basically become a spiritual mentor to me and someone very dear to my heart. And I just was honest with her. And I said, I have been giving my tuition towards Brazil because the Lord has told me to do so. I do not have my tuition money. I had $300 I needed for tuition and did not have it. I said, if that's an issue, then please take $300 out of my Brazil trip and I will figure out how to get that 300 back for Brazil. And she said, no, no, don't worry about that. She's like, that's what we're here for. We'll talk about it. And so we prayed over it and I go upstairs to go to my class. And then about 10 minutes later, after I was up there, she comes back up stairs, which is something she normally doesn't do because she's usually downstairs for first year students. And then she hems to every, the, everybody and she says, Rachel has come to me with a situation 
And I kind of just hung my head down and she goes, we're family, right? I said, yes, you're right. We are family. And she's like, a family are there for each other. I said, yeah. So I thought she was coming up there for group prayer, which is something we have done before. And she said, well, I just want you to know that as soon as you walked up the stairs, somebody came to me, someone that didn't even know your name, asked me if you were having financial problems. And I said, I don't want to reveal the details, but I can say there is a situation. And then she said, well, before I came here, God told me to bring a sum of money with me in cash. And I was supposed to give it to somebody. And that is her. And I just kind of froze when she told me. And she said, Rachel, there was $500 in that donation. So not only did I have $300 covered for my tuition, but I had an extra $200 that went into Brazil. And then I thought my miracle was over that day. I cried and was praising God. And then she called me after, after class. And she said, call me. And so I was like, okay. And she goes, how are you doing? And, and I said, oh, I'm feeling pretty fabulous. And she goes, are you ready to feel more fabulous? And I said, I don't know if my heart can take anymore. And she goes, well, after I went back downstairs and without even knowing the situation, another $200 came through. <laughs> and I just, I could not believe it. That covered, and here's the funny part. I was thinking that the final installment was $500. It was actually 700. God knows I'm bad at math. And so he covered that 200 before I even knew I needed it. (laughs) So that was, that's how I got almost all of my tuition was from these copious amounts of, um, of donations just dropping. But how, what I really believe is in January, I made the commitment to start tithing like really tithing every week, just being an obedient and every week, like it wasn't a big amount. Like it was like five, 10 bucks, like every week. And it was what God was telling me to do. He's like, just do it. And so no less, no more, just what he asked me. And I did that consistently for three months. And then all of a sudden big money flow coming from heaven. (laughs) So, So I I know that someone's watching that is needing a financial breakthrough and God, not only you worked very hard and it wasn't that you, um, I mean, you really worked hard. We could, Mm -hmm. with the paparazzi jewelry and, um, putting yourself out there and yeah, the, any of the commission sales, you also were promoting. Um, Mm -hmm. and so your friends are buying worship flags. So that was awesome. I mean, it's, it's, we love to be able to, to serve the kingdom in this way and send people around. So, uh, just, you know, kudos to your hard work, but thank you for the testimony because I think people need to hear this. They need to know Mm -hmm. that nothing is impossible with God. Oh no. (laughs) You know, like, yeah, you didn't have any money and any of the money that you needed to start with. There was no seed money that you had, but you, but God was very, very faithful. Now we Mm -hmm. talked a little bit about that. You'd been, you're anointed. You are very um, artistic and you're, you make beautiful art. Uh, But the other thing is that you, we mentioned that we talked about this just before we came, we started recording um, that you brought your flags. So you have been flagging. Um, Did you, okay. So two questions. It's a two part question. Uh, When you worshiped, did you worship um, in as a ministry to those that don't believe or or don't know God yet? Um, um, And, or, was did you find that the, the the flag ministry was a ministry to your own team what happened with the worship flags because you, you oh posted goodness. really beautiful photos or and videos oh my goodness um probably the first thing that happened uh the it was actually the i think it was the first event that we did i believe it was the first or second it's all kind of like blurring together but um 
we did one night where they opened up the, the missionary base that we stayed at. They opened it up and everybody is welcomed in the surrounding area. And that night was uh, incredible for me because we were there in a Portuguese country. So they're, they're singing uh, worship songs in Portuguese. And so I'm like, not that it wasn't like it didn't intimidate me i just i kind of felt weird at first because i was i'm on top of my flagging i sing and you know and i'm going i don't know what the words are i was a, i was a little bit afraid to uh being offensive you know because i wasn't singing and then um so then i, I decided i'm just gonna dance that's what i'm gonna do that's what god called me to do so i did so i brought out the blue flags that i got from catch the fire and um ironically there wasn't a whole lot of other flaggers they, they said usually there's like a whole slew of them but there wasn't and it was just me and just i was the only one with flags out there and i just was just out there flagging while everyone is singing in portuguese and just something just like broke off of me spiritually because it was so intimate just me and god and just me dancing and, and just not really thinking much about the words. And a lot of times when I do worship in English, I mean, yes, I am dancing in the spirit, but there are times when the words get to me and then that drives up whatever, whatever it is I'm doing with the flags. But this time it wasn't, the words didn't matter. I could feel the spirit completely. And I felt so pretty because I was wearing a brand new dress that I got from the market and I had my hair done and I have these beautiful blue flags and it just was out there just going for it. And then my team witnessed before I even started dancing, one of them team members spoke a word and said, your dance tonight is going to shift the atmosphere. It's going to strike something in each and every person that witnesses it. And he says, and it's going to put you in a new element of dance. And so I was like, okay, let's do this. <laughs> and so he, uh, he prayed that into me. And I think that, I think that's what broke off is a lot of fear and insecurities that I do tend to have in dancing. None of it mattered. And it did put me in a whole new element of how I do my flagging. And the cool part was it started to rain in Brazil this time of, in that time of year in May, it rains at random at any time. And, uh, so I was afraid that <laughs> we were going to have a downpour, but we didn't have a downpour. And then it did start to rain a little bit heavy. So I actually put the flags away so that it didn't get ruined. But I heard God say, go back out there. And I'm like, but I don't want to get my flags wet. And he's like, go back out there. So I put the flags back where I had, like, in my chair, went back out there, and I was just dancing without flags in the rain, just me and Papa in the rain. Like, I felt literally like a child just dancing in the rain, something that I had always wanted to do as a kid and never got to do. And so here I get to do it with God, and it was so awesome and intimate. And the next thing I know, like while I'm dancing, they are suddenly singing a song in Portuguese that I knew in English and I knew what it was. So of course I'm singing it in English, but they're singing in Portuguese. And it was like that harmonizing thing. And I heard God say, this is my kingdom. Yeah. This whole like atmosphere, this is my kingdom. Different languages, different cultures, all in one. And there's and we're all there for the same reason. So I saw heaven come down to earth that night, like for real. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's something really, uh, not to take away from your story, but when we were in Whistler, we, we uh, when I took the fire catchers to Whistler a month ago, um, it was one day we actually worshiped all in Spanish, no English. And uh, it, it was, I, it didn't even matter. It did not matter that I didn't understand the words. I was as struck by his presence and in love with, with 
uh, his, with him, with his presence. So yeah, like that is the kingdom that every knee, like every nation, every mm -hmm. nation is going to call upon the Lord and yeah. you know, their language. And it doesn't, um, and you realize what true worship is. You really, when you, when you can't understand the words, you realize how much you are entering into worship as opposed to relying on the band or the song. Right. Yeah. So that's, um, so Rachel, what's, what's next now? Now <laughs> <laughs> where are you going next? I don't know. Um, I don't, I know, like I heard God loud and clear uh, about two years ago. And he said he would, that I would dance for him all over the world. So I know that Brazil is not the end of it all. Um, I actually believe he will call me to go back someday. Um, I'm actually believing that, that it will happen. Um, I think for now, like, I'm just kind of like continuing with what he wants me to do in my local community. Um, I still, even though I have graduated from DSSM, I continue to go to these classes and pour into the students. Um, they have talked about adding a third year, so there could that could, which would include another mission trip. Um, I know that they had also talked about trying to find a way to do like a reunion mission trip, meaning graduates go together and join forces to wherever the Holy Spirit takes us. Um, however, I know um, I am eight months away from having my car payment completely done. So I am planning on setting aside money for God to just tell me where to go. And it's like, it's my own, like tithing into my own missions. And then once that happens and then he reveals to me where I'll go, then of course I'll need to raise funds once it happens, but nothing had opened up the doorway yet, but my, I think my journey is just starting because I mean, I just have this new job and it's, I get paid vacation from the new job. And <laughs> <laughs> what a concept. Yeah. So, um, I want to, I want to, uh, pray for you, but, but maybe this is a little plug for the fire catchers. I have a vision to bring fire catchers around the world. And so we're going to Bhutan next May. So put it on your radar. Woo! <laughs> and it's, and it's, um, the purpose is worship, only worship, oh. worship, minister to him. We're going to, uh, I'll, I'm just starting to build the itinerary for the trip and uh that will be coming out in the next few weeks so if someone if if anybody has made it all the way to the end of this video thank you for watching um <laughs> there's going to be more information um and rachel i would love so love to be able to do a, a ministry trip with you um <laughs> you know i i just have this vision of 24 fire catchers Ooh ministering to the Lord and in, in around the world. And that we started in, in Whistler, BC. And now uh, we're going to go over to Bhutan, which is, in, gosh. is in Southern it's uh it's in Asia. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, uh, so I, let me pray for you. Um, okay. Father, thank you for the miracles that she saw. And we only got a taste. Like it was just a taste of, of all that you did through her, um, to her, in her, around her for the team that went for her. Uh, it just bless them that they would be, um, forever changed by what they experienced in Brazil, the people that they've touched and ministered to the other Christians that they connected with, that they're, that they would be, um, that they were just such a blessing, but that blessing is something that is eternal because what is of you is eternal. Uh, and so the, the one that Rachel had seen and, and she was waiting for, we pray, um, just strengthen her wherever she is right now, mm -hmm. that she continues to walk with you, that the enemy is going to assail her with all sorts of negative thoughts that she doesn't deserve it. But Rachel has mm -hmm. such a powerful story and her life is such a testimony that she was able to share that. Um, 
that uh, your Holy Spirit, you are so much stronger. And I bless Rachel with finances, with um, vision and dreams and enjoyment and fun. Just Rachel is so the all the whole package of of just a beautiful vessel before the Lord with so much fun and um, like just like really a lot of fun. I think we would be friends if we we (laughs) lived in Springfield. Um, Just, yeah, she's totally the whole package. Just bless her. Thank you for the job that she's got, that you've given her Mm -hmm. this, this new place, even though she's moving out of a Christian environment that she's moving into, um, more mainstream. However, she carries a spirit with her. And so let Mm -hmm. her understand that what she carries, that what she carried in Brazil is exactly what she carries in Springfield and give her power, boldness, that she would impact the kids just by loving on them, that you can, a whole lot can be said without it, without using words. So Lord bless her, keep her, uh, make her face shine upon her in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. <laughs>